Some days you win, some days you lose. Today, I lost. Well, traders, um, I'm going to finish in red today. As you can see here, my results are uh, not good uh, for the first day of the week. I'm down $14,000 and if you count my winners, you'll find uh, three. If you count my losers, you will find four, but it's actually more. It's uh, two more. It's like six because I had three trades in BABA, all losing trades in BABA. Unbelievable. I mean, BABA really killed me. As you can see today, BABA is the, the major reason why I'm ready for the day. Anyway, uh, it's a very bad day for me. Uh, within my limits, within my limits, there's uh, nothing special about uh, how much money I lost today. But you know, every once in a while, my average is uh, one and a half losing days a week, and I will consider it this way. So there's nothing really very special in what happened today. I did over trade. I think it's a kind of thing that is, um, you know, happened to me after this long weekend. We didn't trade for a few days. We had. Uh, we had a long weekend, uh, it's Tuesday today, so, you know, I kind of got excited um, and over-traded, definitely over-traded. And maybe maybe it's just because I didn't trade for a few days, I don't know, but I definitely over-traded. I just look at the results here and it definitely means over-trading. Uh, there's just one trade I want to discuss here. I had too many trades. I don't really want to go through this, but there's really just one thing I want to talk about, which is kind of interesting from education perspective, and that would be GME. Watch GME. One of you guys posted it uh, today when you noticed that uh, the Scott was the Scott, did I say Scott? The stock was coming down uh, quite a bit from the highs. So stock came down quite a lot with a lot of downside momentum and a lot of volume. Look at the volume. It looks like, and I did not check it, but it looks like something intraday happened. This could be, or it just could be the daily. If you watch the daily, the stock is way overextended on the daily. It had some huge upside days. It does not mean that it's not going to continue, but there may be some profit taking there. So this stock, which was recently under $10, $5 or so, just moved uh, all the way up to $45. And if you take a look at uh, the intraday, it's definitely coming down. So why, after moving so strongly to the upside today, it kind of crashed down today? I don't know. Maybe that was some kind of an intraday news. Um, or maybe just fear or profit taking or whatever. So the point where we joined under 39 over here, the one I posted in the trading room, Turned out to be a successful trade, but I want to talk about it a little bit more. That was way too late. The entry point should have been after the first big move down, probably over here. You see, that was the big crash here with the major volume. The way it came down here was the most interesting, was the interesting way. And then you wait for a pullback and then you short it once more. The entry should have probably been under 40. We joined under 39 does not sound too bad, but you know, one point in a stock like that could easily uh, take it up and you know, uh, uh, you, could, you could easily have a loser just because you just shorted it a point below where you should have. Now it's a big mover, definitely a big mover. But when you short a stock that has so much downside momentum, you don't, but it's already too extended to the downside. You do not expect a continuation uh, I mean, it's not like a, a trade that you're going to sit on the rest of your day. I'm still following it with 100 shares over two points right now. But the fact is, you take it as a scalp. You just move in and out real quick. So you see, from 39, it came down to 37, 60 or so. It was almost one and a half point or so. It came down, gave us plenty of space. I think my target was, my, my partial was a little bit more than dollar, dollar twenty or something like that. And then... At that point, I was very, very happy, relieved to be out. In fact, still following it with a very small size. But, you know, you never know what's coming next. And look at what happened next. I mean, it came up and moved all the way to 39.70 or so. So that, and, and I'm still following it because with one other shares after taking a partial, that 
that's something I can do. But when you come across a stock that behaves like GME and you want to join into the momentum because there was definitely a lot of momentum down here, you can do it, but please regard it as a scalp. A scalp is, you know, if it works real quick, you're in and you're taking the money. If it goes against you, you're real quick out. If you count on the momentum and on the volume to take it down, really quick and that's what really happened when we moved in the initial move took us to our target very quickly and that was exactly how you should regard it if it comes down there fine take your partial and put the risk behind you if it doesn't if it starts going sideways then the stock was way too extended to the downside you should be moving out if it doesn't really happen very quick just get out of this trade if it happens take a quick partial Ignore the fact that it, con it can continue several points lower. Just ignore it. It's too dangerous. Just don't mess around with this. So we got it right. We moved in at the right place. We took our partial. That was a nice trade. One of my uh, only winners, and not a big one really, just, you know, quick scalp. And my, my average losers were bigger than that. So, um, okay. Um, that's it for me today. I'm having a red day. I hope you guys are doing better than I do. Thank you guys in YouTube for joining us. If you don't mind, give us a thumb up right here. We will appreciate if you do that. So let's, um, I'm going to hope for a better day tomorrow. Thank you for all for joining today and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Bye traders.